Hello and welcome back to our inventory system series. In episode 3 we'll be going over the second half of our interaction system which is the item data component. This component allows us to tell the items which item they are from our item data and pull information from that data table allowing them to display themselves with the correct name, correct icons and so forth. So let's jump straight in. Okay so now we've got an interaction system in our game. We now need to be able to pick up items and interact with them. Now, what we have the issue with now doing is how do we replicate this on multiplayer as well as making it so we can easily set up which item is what item based on the data table. So here we make use of a different component. And that's going to be the item to add component. So let's go in, create our new component in our content browser, blueprint class and choose actor component and this we're going to call is item component or item data we'll call it item data component and in that item data component it can be quite a simple setup really um, but we're going to have in its first variable the item data uh, no, item id that's more accurate and this is going to be a data table row handle now, what this means, it allows us to easily select which, which item from our data table to show. More on that in a moment. We also need to know how much of, of this item exists on this component here too. So we'll do a quantity on this as well. And that's going to be an integer, whole number. Okay. Right, so we need those there. And we'll make these also uh, editable. So we're going to tick editable, editable, both of those. And then we're going to uh, close that there. Go to our test item here. And I'm gonna add that item data uh, component. Right, so in order to add item data to this, we actually need some item data itself. So we're gonna to go to our content draw, go to our item data, uh, data table, and we're gonna add in our first item. Now, when you first click, click add at top here, you're gonna see a blank row appear. And down here you should see the option to add details. So in here we're going to call this first one apple description a juicy looking red apple to brighten up anyone's day. Okay. And then we've got the thumbnail. This is an image we want to use. So to help me with this, I'm going to go over and add an image from a website in particular. Let's go over to gameicons.net. If you just search for game icons in Google, go to gameicons.net and you've got some loads of free uses of ones here. Also you can use any icons you like. If you've got some already, by all means use them. I'm gonna type in Apple and you'll see shiny Apple appears here. And that'll do lovely. I just have that and download that as a PNG. Yes. So we're going to drag that into our content browser. And I usually put these in a separate folder. Items. We'll make a new folder here for icons. And we'll put that in there. Okay. Let's just rename it so it's a bit easier to uh, find. So apple underscore t for texture. Okay. Uh, right. So if we go back to our data table, we can now search for that in our thumbnail apple underscore t and the item class at the moment is just going to be nothing we'll leave it as none but stack size we'll put in as say i don't know 10 for whatever reason okay this we don't matter we can change these at any point later on too now the main thing that is important in here is the row name and you'll see the row name here is the first column in our data table this is a unique id identifier for our items Okay, and keyword being the uniqueness of it. So if we double click on that, we can type in any ID we like. This could be numbers, letters, whatever you want. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to type in Apple. Hit save. Now, the beauty of what we're doing here is that on my test item, on the item data component, I can go over to my item ID, and my data table here, I can choose from none to my item data, and the row name will now show Apple as an option. And there you go. Now, one thing to 
note is well, if you want to make this really um, much easier for you in the long term if you're adding loads of items there's some default behavior we can set up here on our item component so let's go over to our item data component click on the item id expand this open and change the default data table already to the item data because it's not going to be anything different so just leave it as that and the quantity by default is going to be one you're never going to be adding just zero so we'll default it to one and that'll just save us a bit of time setting up each of these item data components for different items okay okay compile and save that one and there we go right so i need to return back from here the message about what item this thing actually is so we're going to get that from our data table over here so let's go to our look at message and we'll see return node saying pick up test item we'll make that change that based upon our item data so we're going to do drag out our item data component and then from there get item id and split that open and you need to split it because you need to get access to the data table and the row name and what you can do with the data table is get a singular row by doing get row and you'll see get data table row plug that in and the row name will come from the same location here and we now have row found row not found and the out row now because we're using a unknown variable of the data table here this out row won't automatically change to match the type so you have to do that for itself so for it yourself so so let's take out from out row here and do break item struct and now we're going to get all this information about our item and in particular i want the name here so on the message here, we're going to drag this out and do format text. And we're going to put in pickup. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to put in item close curly brackets. And when you hit enter, you'll see the parameter appear named as you've named it here as a pin. And that simply can be the name there. Right, I'll save. So if I go up to this test item here. You can see there in top left it's saying pick up apple pick up apple pick up apple there we go we can now determine what item is what and in the next episode we're going to go through how to pick them up may allow them to be destroyed from the world they're in now this will also be replicated via multiplayer so we get to cover that too at the same time you can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan lady and catch all my videos early from just one dollar a month Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.